Four goals to it without a miss. Nor, nor would have got one also without a miss. Hine this time gets the tap away up towards Roberts, who's come up into the centre square. Players stacking up on the ball. Zubernick at the bottom of the pack. And the umpire will come in and bounce. About 20 metres from the centre circle. Nord in attack, kicking with a breeze and trailing by three. Murano couldn't get the kick away. Eddie Fry fires for the open spaces out towards the grandstand centre wing spot. The bounce favours Craig. He couldn't put it down either. Painter comes out with a football, gives Barbara the opportunity. Sturt clear again. Out goes Motley on the lead. Gets underneath the ball. He's got it. Sturt killing them out of that square. They're running players using the ball too well at the moment. And Peter Motley's got the opportunity from 25 metres out. 45 degree angle. Injury pre-season. Made the first game OK. Here's his chance for his first goal of 1984. That's it, right through the middle. Five goals without a miss, the Blues. And Sturt continued that pinpoint accuracy. And when we pick up play now, seven minutes into the second quarter, Sturt seven straight goals to Norwood, three goals, five. Dickinson has had 10 touches today, by the way, so far. 10 handballs, 10 kicks, a good opening. Hine, should I say five handballs hit, five kicks. Neil Hine, Justin Scanlon, Keith Thomas and Whittlesey. Thomas in front, did it well, couldn't take the mark. Big Jim. Frost. Oh, the handball put Barbary in trouble, but he did it well to Ford. Ford's got a lot of players to use. <laughs> Instead, he elects to kick to the opposition. Danny Jenkins, Fisher, Scanlon, Justin Scanlon, tears up to the middle of the ground. No one to kick to. Andrew Downs way out in front. Oh, he went up far too early. Got over the top of uh, Bruce Winter. A little bit unlucky. Andrew thought that he was sleeping for the ball and not trying to spoil, and he shouldn't have been penalised. The umpire thought differently. Bruce Winter. Frost from behind. Roberts in front is allowed to take the mark. No opposition. And uh, Michael Annie did some very good work there. He kept Frost from interfering. And all Roberts had to do was to contend with Heinrich. Far too much height for that player. And Neville Roberts took the easy mark. I'll back him in for this goal. Best goal kicker in this state, Neville Roberts. That's his second. Nord a 4-5, the Blues 7. Roberts has had four touches now. He's kicked two goals. He's given a one away to Murano. So the great effective player for the leagues. They haven't got too many up forward at the moment. And the efforts of Roberts keeping them in the game. But on that occasion, it was a good piece of work there by Michael Annie that enabled him to take the easy mark. And John Halbert not really pleased with that defensive effort. Poor old Jack. He's, he's a bit worried at the moment. I think he's frightened. Roberts is going to kick 10. It happened at Unley, I think, last year or the year before. Thomas to Ace, back to Thomas. They're on the run again. Winter in front of Downs. He's got it. Oh, Andrew Downs not happy. He wasn't quite sure whether to play in front or behind then, Ian, and uh, he ended up making the wrong decision. Bruce Winter. Gee, if he could get into the goals, it'd be a big bonus for Norwood. Kick number five, straight through the middle. Goal number one, Bruce Winter. Norwood are back in business. 5-5 five, five to Sturt, seven goals without a miss. Peter, it's indicative that the breeze is not all that strong because Sturt kicked six into it. Now Norwood, in their turn against it, have kicked three goals, one already. We've only played ten minutes of the second quarter, but it was a classic one-out situation there. Downs, not an over-tall player, and when he gets caught one out like that without being able to get a run at the ball, he just has to concede the height, and we're too strong in front. Aish and Thomas did it for Norwood last time. They're the players they need to fire. Hine got the hand of the ball. Keith Thomas dives on top of it. But he gave away a free on the way in. Whittlesey was on the ground, and I think he dragged his leg over his shoulder. Unlucky. Nothing intentional about it. Whittlesey goes long. Motley. The ball lands in an open space. Stirred a chance if they can pick it up. They can't. High tackle, Scanlon the free kick. Scanlon almost set a half back. In fact, he's inside the half back line. He's going across goal. Oh, he's going to set it up. Spill there will spoil. Fortunately for Norwood, they got out of it through Andrew Jarvis. He's half back flank at the moment. Morano's the running player. It would have been a free up field, but they play to advantage. 
And here's a chance now for Thomas. Back to Morano in the one-two. Goes forward, or oh, the kick's a shocker, but I think it's found Winner. Oh, how lucky can you be? It was an awful kick. Gave Winner no hope at all, or at least the part that he was looking for. I think it was probably um, the blonde rover in Menzel, but it was a floating putt kick. Winner's got it, 25 metres out, into the breeze. And he's got his second. Lord right back in it. Trailing by only one point. 6-5 to seven goals, the Blues lead. The Nord's running players. Haven't got many of them, but they're right into it at the moment. Keith Thomas set that up beautifully on the way in. And finally, the kick was atrocious. It was a floater. But Bruce Winter got hold of it and kicked truly. This quarter, Winter has got two and Roberts has got two. And Nord are back in business. They're starting to get the ball away from centre, and that was crucial. Line ball this one. Thomas got it over there to Andrew Jarvis, Morano, good handball, kicked into the mound, crossed under pressure, goes for the soccer, down, leads in the race against Winter, supported back there by Tim Pake, but down, gets the kick away, but it's a shocker straight now to Michael Aish. Sturt just getting a little rattled, Michael Anney looks for a running player, Morano gives him that run, 40 metres clear, puts it up in the air, but the breeze takes it right across the front, Roberts! Rocky Roberts has got a grin on his face. What a great try for 15 metres. He could get a job in Hollywood for that. <laughs> Academy Roberts Awards are coming it. up. He's going to play on, improved his angle. Umpire, Argent, won't let him. He's got to go back to kick over his mark. Well, a little bit of humour creeping into the game. No humour for Sturt at the moment. Nord can at least even the score here. And if Roberts is up to his usual form, they'll hit the front. 20 metres out, angle acute, straight through the middle. Roberts, third goal. The legs are in front. 13 metres into the second quarter, 13 minutes into the second quarter, lead 7 5 to 7 goals. Screws one back to centre half forward. Keith Thomas, Whittlesey. Whittlesey up for the spoil. Thomas played it well, but he got it clear to Ace. Those two players, Thomas and Ace, are getting into the game. McIntosh. Haven't seen him for a while. The captain forgot to tackle. Frost, left alone, took the mark. Recruited from the Glenelg side. Pake. Dickinson applies the tackle. Tim Pake. Kicks to centre half forward. Machini will let it go. The big leap from behind. Painter. Two grabs. Oh, let's do that just a little bit too easily. Painter can kick a goal from there. Kick number 10 coming up for the Sturt champion. Johnny Painter. A goal will put the Blues back in front. Beautiful kicking action. Straight through the middle. Goal number one, Painter. Sturt are 8 1. Norwood 7 5. Yes, yeah, Sturt. Uh attack from the half back line then when Pake had come right up from the back pocket he was a good 50 or 60 metres away from that position when he got the ball and that was a fine leap by Painter because he would have been giving away centimetres and as Peter Marker has told you it was a fine kick when he gets the ball Painter certainly knows what to do with it. 8-1 Sturt they've resumed the lead Nord 7-5 49 points plays 47. Neil Hine has looked at his game a bit no doubt Neil Baum has insisted that he get hand of the ball first. He did it again. Winter, Aish, Murano. They're running again. The lead's on. Michael Annie, terrible kick. Went straight over the head. Andrew Downs. Roberts applies the tackle. Heinrich runs away with it. Gives it to Eddie Fry. Sturt a chance. Craig's running. So is Hollis. Craig will be the player that will get it. He'll run with it. Oh, the handball's got a good one. Goes over the top. Dividends for them. Whittlesey running through half forward. Grab. Didn't have it. No free kick. Davies on the ground. Norwood players defending. Fantasia misses the ball. Davies gets it out. Hollis ducks the head. Painter again with the left boot. Oh, I think he kicked it. Great goal, Painter. Two goals now to that player. Sturt 9 1. Norwood 7 5. Top passage of play. Excitement galore. 
Whittlesey showed tremendous pace to get up from his centre position or get into the pocket. And uh, he handballed out in front of him, was tagged, but the umpire said play on. And finally, Painter wormed his way out of the pack. A nice left foot kick. Put his second on in three minutes. And Sturt clear out to 9-1-7-5 lead. Gee, I don't know where Sturt have found it from, but uh, they're very, very quick. Hine again, Maynard tackled. You'll find there will be a bounce. Haven't seen much of Maynard. Hine is certainly coming back into it, though, for the Norwood side. He's the player that's lifted. Of course, McKechnie is now on. And that player will get the free kick. McKechnie, or is it? Yes, McKechnie from Czech side of the centre circle. And maybe that's the reason that Hine is more into the play. They're resting Spiel. That's the Blues at the moment. Darrington half forward line. Zubernick caught on the left leg. Puts out the pass. Looking for Machini on the lead. But it was too far for that player and it's out of play. Seems that John Halbert wants to uh, find a partner for Spiel early in the season rather than uh, have the problems that they've had in previous years here. Well, Peter, it's uh, been the fact that Spiel is pretty tired come finals time. And obviously as he gets older, it's going to be worse. And as you say, they've found a uh, looking for a partner for him. And the young lad's only, uh, only about 18 or 19. And uh, normally he doesn't come on or they don't bring off their resting ruckman for about five or ten minutes of the quarter to go. But Halbert's got him on earlier in this quarter. Davies tries the backhander. Michael Ace worms out of the pack. Menzel caught. Got rid of it, though. Jimmy Fantasia back to Hine. The big chap is beautifully tackled by Howard. Fantasia is similarly tackled. Finally, Fisher. He fell over when he tried to kick it. Ace gives up the Macintosh. And he'll take the free kick. In the wars early. Got it clear. Oh, he missed Menzel with it. Finally, Jarvis. Scanlon. Thomas. They're running again. Roberts will get it. He's on his own. Got the ball in front of him. The tackle's on. Murano. Who can he find? He's looking for Roberts. Beautiful knock away there by Whittlesey. Playing both ends of the ground. Jimmy Pike. Greg barbary has got the run of it. Can have a bounce if he wants to. On the lead. Couldn't take the mark, Painter. Well done, Danny Jenkins. Gives it over to Teal. Teal shrugs the tackle. Kicks it clear and looks for Dickinson. Dickinson on the half-forward line. Can't get to the ball before it goes out of place. Plenty of action in this quarter. Far better than the first, where Sturt was showing a clean pair of heels to the legs. Hine in front. Menzel taken off him by Howard. Going to a little to Hudson. The umpire just easing players down. Now will be Menzel, as Peter told you, had a couple of bad breaks of his leg in recent times. Might have cost him a metre. Darrington onto his boot quickly. Drives up towards full forward. Chance now for Noble. Can't get it clear. Fantasia to Scanlon. Scanlon has been pushed in the back and going to get a free kick. Just inside the half-back line. Runs it to Noble. Michael A's under pressure now from Howard. Michael Annie likewise. Coming through, however, is Thomas. Ace back running again in support. He'll give it to Noble. Now it will go to Dickinson. Centre wing. And he bolts. Puts it up towards full forward. Fry getting back. Heinrich in position and takes the easy chest mark. Good back pocket play now, Heinrich. Hands full today, though, with Roberts. Up goes Big Jim. Couldn't take the mark. McKechnie. Gee, is he raw. Boy, oh boy, but he's got some power in that, in that body of his. And uh, let's hope he can be of good support eventually to Big Frank Spear. Michael Annie is number 31, McKechnie 39 for the Blues. Got his hand to that one. Jack Frost for the Blues. Kicks to the centre of the ground. Jarvis, plenty of courage. No mark. Laurie Argent was there. He had a good view of it. And obviously that ball hit the ground here. Yes, Peter, he indicated that almost before um, the player went to the ground. You know, you could see that it was going, but... Obviously, from here, we couldn't tell, but Argent was in a perfect position. Obviously made the correct decision. McIntosh, centre field. Put the legs into attack, drops it up there quickly. Out comes Roberts. Good mark. Whoop. The right cross there. Roberts elects to play on. Gives a chance to Michael Ace. Goal square! Beautifully put. Right on a pinhead. 
It's on at the square. Eddie Fry in there. There's two left crosses that I saw. Players getting terribly excited. In they go. Michael Ace has got the ball in case you've forgotten. He's lost his headgear. I don't think he was involved in the fracas right from the start. Might have got involved a little bit later. He'll get his kick about five metres out. And the game has really livened up here at Footy Park. Gee, I'll tell you what, though, Ian, the kick from Neville Roberts was perfection. You, you will, couldn't possibly see better than that anywhere. Michael Ace gets a 15 metre on top of that. Puts him on the 15th green at the golf course. Doesn't miss. Kick number nine. Michael Ace's second goal. And Norwood's kick back. They trail now by 2.85 to 9-1. Eight points the difference. Centre bounce. Michael Annie having a run on the ball. Taken away by Ace. Kicks wide. Open spaces. The battle of the speeds is out there. Heinrich leading, but he won't get to it before it goes out of play. Eight points the difference, and... Uh... Gee, the pace was red hot in that second quarter and uh, I think it's taken its toll on a lot of players. Much tighter quarter this quarter. But uh, equally as important. Michael Annie knocked it straight down the throat of Machini who gave it to Frost. Frost tears off. Kicks it up towards Motley. Couldn't take the mark. Fantasia first there. Motley with superior pace. Handball's in front of him. Spiel. Not Spiel. Teal. Puts it back towards Jenkins. And there'll be a ball in. Michael Annie drifts to the back lines. Motley will take it against him. Teal from behind. Murano again. Kicks high around the body. Dickinson underneath the ball, but in front. A good mark to Jimmy Darrington. Darrington out on the half-forward line. Filkey gives a lead into the pocket. He puts it up in the air for Davies, who's short on legs to get there. Filkey, good mark. He's well out from goal. I doubt whether he'll make the distance either from there. Kicks in quickly. Davies, one-on-one. -on -one. Noble, Davies, Davies. He should recover. Soccer's off the ground. Goal. Well done. In the man-to-man -man clashes, he's beaten Noble. His fourth goal. 14-5 the Blues. Norwood 11-9. Well, there's no doubt that the Sturt players know what to do when it goes forward. If you can possibly get it up to Rick Davies in a one-out situation, do it. Because nine times out of ten, he'll convert or do something positive. He kicked that one off the ground for his fourth. Good work, Rick Davies. 11-9 Norwood, Sturt 14-5. Michael Annie and McKechnie, who gets the thump away. Menzel getting back. Jarvis coming across. Ace providing a run. Out wide is Murano. That's the ball will travel, I think. Yes, Machini can't find it. Murano gets leg. The umpire doesn't see it. The crowd don't like it. Painter plays on. Out there wide is Brendan Howard, who takes his eyes off the ball. Run down. In goes Dickinson, Murano again, Thomas gets it out wide, Danny Jenkins, the legs go into attack, long up towards Roberts, Heinrich's there as well, thumps it away, back in the fence was Pate, gives Fry the opportunity to run it out, the running par now is Hollis if he gets the set, can't pick it up, he's well shepherded however, look at the speed of Pate, he's got it back, tremendous rebound in towards Motley, oh what brilliant football, what brilliant stuff, Motley 35, 40 metres out, and the pace of Tim Pake then was unbelievable. He must have backed up a more than 100 metres on that occasion. Motley kick number nine. In short goes Barbary, but Motley's going for the woodwork. Kick offline with the breeze. Close to the line. Davies elects to play on. Tries to run round. decision to go on and uh, he knew what the risks were. Top stuff here at Football Park. Scanlon kicks off over McKechnie. Machini does it cleverly to Howard. Looking for Craig. Craig getting under it now. What courageous effort there by Danny Jenkins. He takes a fine mark. Jimmy Till wants it. Not going to get it though. Jenkins playing safe. Kicking along the outer side of the ground. Sturt plays everywhere. Eddie Fry play it on, says the ump. Fry goes down onto the knees. Puts it out towards Painter. Daisy cutter of no effect. Push from behind was Jenkins. And here's free kick. 
first league game as skipper for the north side. No mark there. Menzel first to recover. Gee, he did that well. Finally gets it to Aish. Aish quick as a flash. Gave it over to, Menz, uh, to McIntosh. On the run is Thomas. Beautiful kick at goal. It's going through. Oh, great stuff, Norwood. First goal, Thomas. Norwood 12-9. They won't give up. Sturt 14-5. Got a great passage of play, but 15 out of 10 to Albie Menzel then. He uh, missed it first opportunity, had to stand his ground when Whittlesey came over the top. He ran through two brick walls to get the ball over. Lightning handball, ace there, McIntosh in it. And finally a magnificent kick on the run by Thomas. Brought Norwood's 12th goal. Well, both sides have kicked four in this all-important third quarter. The next three or four minutes, very important. Michael Lenny got it down, it went to Barbary. He shuffled it out, Michael Lenny again. Too many players in there and there'll be another bounce. Great opening to the 84 season. The game at Footy Park has got everything. McKechnie, Spiel off the ground, of course, with that injured wrist. Menzel, through it goes to Ford. Ford's got a ton of pace, he comes out of half-back. The kick is not a good one. Fantasia. Hoping for the free kick, he won't get it. He tries to get McIntosh, he's got that player. Oh, he got out of trouble there, I don't know how. Puts it on the boot, looking for Roberts. Roberts gave away a free kick. Who had hold of who, they asked. Heinrich will get it. What do you think about that one here? Well, Peter, we can't tell from here, but the umpire was right in position. Umpire charged with, but with all those sort of things, it's usually a half a dozen of one and six of the other, isn't it? He chose uh, Heinrich, who appears to have injured. I wouldn't be surprised if he's injured a groin, but he's obviously in pain there as Gary Ford thumps the ball clear, intercepted by Dickinson, who's well covered over on the outer side by Hollis. Dickinson comes out with the ball, runs into Ford, and a throw-in will take place or a centre bounce. Just Let's have a look at Heinrich. Can't even see where they're looking, but whatever it is, it doesn't look healthy. Trainer's looking very perplexed. They're almost uh, looking to the bench for, for help. Menzel, gee, he showed a ton of courage in this quarter. Fine football, Dickinson through. Nord into attack again. Sturt one man short down there. Fine mark, Hine. Used his body to out position Downs. And he's a big man to get around. Anxiety still over Heinrich. But Hine with the opportunity 10 metres out. Norwood needed almost three quarter time. Down by eight. Now it's two. Hines first goal. 14 5. Plays 13 9. Nord, they're trying everything. Menzel is the player that is leading by example. Ton of courage. He won't give up. He's getting balls in extraordinary positions. Making opportunities for players up forward. Dickinson's doing plenty of work. When the long ball came in, it was Hine who made better position than Andrew Downs to take the mark on the chest. Two points in it now, Norwood trailing. Heinrich appears to be OK, still out there with Roberts. He's got the sock down, I think he may have cramped. 29 minutes into the third quarter, two points separate these two great sides. Michael Annie almost comes in on the check side after the bounce. I suppose that's legal. Aish jams it onto his boot towards Winter. Can't quite trap it. McIntosh again on Murano. A chance out wider still now as Rocky Roberts heaves it in towards goal. Downs getting back on it, but Roberts on the run wasn't quite equal to the task. You don't often see him miss shots like that at goal, even though it was fairly difficult. Didn't appear to line that one up, Neville Roberts. It was uh, quicker than his normal kick. Ford, good effort from behind. He took the mark. That's the end of proceedings here in the third quarter. 14-5 the Blues, the Red Legs 13-10. The last quarter about to begin here at Football Park. Norwood trailing by one point. It's been a fine game. Pace on right from the beginning. Spiel is off the ground. McKechnie has taken his place. McIntosh can't get the kick away. Keith Thomas... He's been a star in the last two quarters. Ace got rid of it very quickly. Hine 
can't push the ball out, and there'll be another bounce. Norwood looked in all sorts of trouble in that first quarter, but players lifted in the second quarter. Aish, Morano, Thomas, Menzel. There's Morano again, gets a quick kick away. Roberts behind on that occasion. The Sturt defender was interfered with, Gary Ford, and he'll take the free kick. That's Maynard, number 18, for, for Nord. Hasn't been in the game a lot. Kick one goal. Craig's the runner for the Blues. Thought about playing on, then put a high ball in. Looking for Rick Davies. Motley in front. Goes up very high. The punch away. Filky for Sturt. Has been useful since he came on. Holding the ball. Quick decision. Justin Scanlon from the back pocket. Sturt by one point as Scanlon puts it back up in the air, but it's not well directed. McKechnie gets it across to Craig. Craig puts it high. Noble in front. Davies! Oh, what a mark! A beautiful mark. Noble did everything right. He's holding on to his back. As Davies, or no, it could have been Hind who's holding his back, or both of them. But Davies was in the middle then, and he pulled down a superb mark. He's booted four. Six kick. Four goals, one to be exact. He's only 20 metres out. Breeze at his back. Straight through the middle. Goal number five. And Sturt get off to a fine start in the last quarter, kicking with the breeze. That's the first goal that Rick Davies has kicked to the, uh, the northern end. And it was a fine effort by McKechnie. He took the mark and he saw the run there from Craig. Craig put it in high. Davies didn't appear to be in a good position for the catch. But it was no problems for the champion full forward. Nor was the kick. Five goals from, from seven kicks. A fine performance. Percentage work from the full forward. Sturt kick away. 15-5. Norwood 13-10. Centre bounce. McKechnie, 19 years of age. Hine got the tap away. Intercepted beautifully, however, by Heinrich. Kicks long in towards Davies again. Can't bring this one down. Aerial ping bong over there towards Spilky. Runs the gauntlet, jams it onto his boot. Gave him a chance. As Barbary it was, who thumped it over his head, but Filky simply couldn't get through the crowd of defence. It was a good effort from Filky to get the kick away with the tackle applied. Um, only bad luck saw it miss. Noble. Looking for Hine, the big chap lets him down on that occasion. Painter, the quick kick misses. McKechnie pushes it further afield, and uh, the big chap's certainly trying hard in the absence of Spiel. A 10 out of 10 for effort. But Neil Hine, who was trounced early, has lifted as well and brought Norwood back into the game. Neil Craig trying to get a free space. Filky again puts his body in front. Trying hard for it, he gets the free kick. Scanlon wants to know why, but uh, Filky did that very cleverly indeed. Put the body in front, and right in the final analysis, he got a high tackle, but I think the free kick had already been given. The kick's on the way, no mistake, Filky. Been a valuable player, interchange, two goals. Sturt now 16-6, Norwood 13-10. And Sturt continued on their merry way in the last quarter there to win by 25 points. Final score, Sturt 23 goals, 7. Accurate kicking, 145 points. Nord, 18 goals, 12, 120. Leading goal kickers for Sturt, Davies and Motley both got 6. And for Norwood, Roberts 4, Winter 4, H 3 and Murano 1. A heap of plays, in fact, for Sturt. For Norwood, scoring minor scores. A quick look at the stats. Sturt, 175 kicks. Norwood, 179. Handballs, 93 to Sturt, 146 to Norwood. Freeze equal on 30. Rucks went out of centre, 9 for Sturt, 16 for Norwood. Scoring shots, 30 apiece. Well, Ian, it was a very good game down at Football Park today. Many new players we've seen in the 84 season commence today. Any of those good players at Football Park today look like going on? Yes, Rick, the two that uh, impressed me the most were 19-year-old Mount Compass farmer David McKechnie. I thought when Spiel went off in that third quarter, I thought, well, here goes Norwood. But the kid came on, he leapt well, and he held the uh, Norwood rucks, Hine, and I think he's probably giving away centimetres to that young man, but he played particularly well, and I think he's got a future ahead of him, 19 years of age. And the other 19-year-old was David Dickinson, the wingman, red-headed boy from Murray Bridge, who played on the wing for Norwood. He picked up a lot of kicks, he has a lot of courage, he's a direct player, and I think he'll go on with that. They were the two best that I saw this afternoon. 
Because Adrian Moskini also made a de booing day games today, Ian. Yeah, right. How was he? Well, Adrian started in the forward pocket. He's called Moskini. I've been calling him Moshini all afternoon. Robert tells me I'm wrong. Sorry, Adrian. <laughs> Moskini. But he started in the forward pocket, and I thought he just was lacking a metre in that first part. But then when Zubernik went off with a, a hip injury, they put him on to centre wing, and he showed the skills that I saw previously when I saw him play, I think, against Woodville a couple of weeks ago. But I still believe that he's going to make it. He's 22 years of age, and I think he's probably just swept up in his first game this afternoon. Of course, Nord also lost uh, Greg Turbull last year when he retired, and that meant that Albie Menzel made a return to league football today with uh, Wayne Morano. Both of them have had various forms of injuries. Albie, of course, with broken legs. What about those two fellows? Both very courageous players, Robert. You know, they might lack also a metre. Albie, of course, broken his leg twice, I think, and he's been regarded more of a, a forward player. But today, I thought, especially after about the first quarter, he picked his game up enormously, and he helped Norwood get back in the game, and he showed tremendous courage, and he did more with the ball than I've seen him do in the past. Morano played brilliantly in the first half, but the further the game on went on, I thought he faded out just a little bit, but another courageous player. Uh, but on the day, I think their rucks were beaten and therefore they didn't get perhaps the opportunities that the opposition did. Finally, Ian, a couple of best players from each side. Yes, well I thought for Sturt, Craig was uh, his usual brilliant self. I don't think I ever see him play a bad game, but he's, uh, he's always moving the ball to advantage. Uh, Peter Motley at centre half forward. This lad's had an injury. What's he got? What did you tell me it was? I've forgotten. Yeah, <laughs> tendonitis, tendonitis. <laughs> Robert told me before, tendonitis. Well, he comes back, plays centre-half forward on Jim Teal, kicks six goals, a fine performance, and I thought John Painter gave them enormous drive, and he always plays well. For uh, Norwood, Thomas playing centre. Keith Thomas, this is, playing centre. I thought he's won his position handsomely in the end. Uh, Whittlesey was moved off him, played very well indeed. Menzel, I've mentioned, and Rocky Roberts. Probably only got nine touches for the whole game, but I reckon seven of them would have produced goals. I thought they were their three best. Thanks, Ian. We'll be back with more. Big replay after this short break.